Now today is a very rare day. I have a bike ready to test ride. <laughs> I have another bike that I haven't even scuffed the tires on. And you would think, wow, all we need now is some weather. So guess what? We wake up this morning and it's going to rain all day or on and off rain. So I'm, I'm ready to surrender here. It's unbelievable. So I thought, well, the only thing I can really do is start with some of my tire changing. Because with this weather being so unpredictable, it isn't even fun coming out to the garage in my hand. And to boot, it's only 40 degrees. So I thought I'd start moving the bikes around here and maybe change out the, the R1 tire. I've had Michelin 2s, I've had Michelin 3s, and Vlad talked me into trying a set of Pirellis. He said he gave me a set of Pirellis to try. So I'm going to change. The front one is ready to change right now today. I think that'll be our project of the day. Now all of the wheels that I've painted, I'm very, very careful when I take the old tire off. Most of the time that you scratch a rim, you scratch it taking the old tire off. So that's, the, that's one of the focuses today is I don't want to scratch any of these rims, let alone the one on the R1. Now we've got a lot of videos out on our channel of taking tires off, swapping tires, changing tires, painting rims, whatever, for anybody that's interested in such things. And the, the rims on some of these bikes are hand buffed, and they're, they're pretty much all painted. So I want to be, number one, be very careful, of course, taking the wheel off and taking the old tire off. And of course, we're going to try to mount it. To, to, well, because of the temperature today, we're going to do it down in the cellar and hopefully get the tire a little bit pre-warmed up. Having a tire warm is the most important thing when you're going to change tires, assuming you're going to do it and try not to scratch the rims. And luckily the RD doesn't wear out a lot of tires. Those are really annoying to change with the tubes. Of course we do it, but it's a lot easier to change tubeless tires. That's for sure. And the biggest key of all, if you can do it, is do it on a hot day. Put the tire that you're going to put on out in the sun. Get it warm, or in our case we have to warm it with uh, one of our quartz heaters. The change in tires when they're cold just makes it a lot more work. And it's hard enough work, you don't have to invent ways to make it harder. Come on boys, it's time to start eating. Hey, it's the time of year we all get hungry. And it is really cold out there. Actually, it's so cold, I really shouldn't even be feeding the fish. But since I started feeding them the other day, <laughs> I guess they're still hungry. Now, luckily, I've been anticipating it'd still be cold out there, and I have all the tire changing stuff already in the cellar. And I want to hang the tire up by the heating vent, because at 40 degrees, the heat is on constantly. And having it up by a heating vent while we're outside taking the rim off the uh, the old tire off, that'll that'll work definitely work in our favor. Even if we get the tire eight ten degrees warmer, it's better. Oh. Trying to get a picture of this cardinal that's up on a tree, but it ain't working out. And there he is, our pet cardinal. Up, oh, he's flying away. <laughs> well, the first thing, of course, is I've got to move the bikes around in such a way that I can get the uh, R1 directly under the come along, the front wheel. That'll make it a lot easier. Now, a couple things will make this a lot easier today. Having it up on the stand and then having a the front end up with the come along, it's a lot more stable than if I, if I just have it hanging up by the front. That makes it a little bit easier. And because of the temperature and the humidity here, I'm gonna have the, the quartz heater as close to me as I can for the whole disassembly of that front, getting the tire off. Now, the last time I rode the R1, I don't think I put this on video, I put these strips. I don't know if you can see them. This is a cl that clear material that they wrap um, stuff with. It's like a clear, like a very, very thick scotch tape. Because what was happening, the, the radar detector, which straps on in the front here, and the electrical connectors here, it was, it was starting to wear the paint thin, and I don't want to lose that original paint. So this will just protect it. I looked exactly where the scratches were. There's two pieces of this material. I don't know if you can even see the joint. I don't know if you can see the joint there. 
Anyway, you don't even see it in real life, and of course it's under the radar detector anyway, but that's a good, a good little thing, and I also have that on the FCR. I'm not sure on the FCR if you can see the edge of it. it, it's, it when you're wiping a bike off, you have to look for it, but it really works good. I got that from Dave Midgley, and thank you, Dave. That, that def, I have it on, I actually have it on, on the R1, on right behind the front tire, on the front fairing. It worked out well, too. So any place, now I, don't, I know Jose has told me they make, it looks like carbon fiber paper that you peel off the back and you put it wherever things are prone to scratch. That's probably a good idea, too. And then you take a heat gun and you can take it right off. Now what I'm going to do is monitor the, uh, all the bikes in the future. And if I see the paint starting to wear thin or taking a beating in any one area, but those magnets are so powerful... They, I don't know how to explain it if you've never had a tank bag with magnets. They really stick. All right, step one. Step one is get that quartz heater close to where we're going to work. You get the front end up off the ground. Now, I always like to just loosen the axle bolts while everything is still on the ground and solid. It just makes that part just a little bit easier. Well, like I said, it's just easier to have these bolts loose before you jack the front off the ground. And since these bolts are all Loctited in with blue Loctite, they don't just spin right out. And you don't have to take, actually you don't have to take them all the way out anyway, so. Just a little time consuming. Oh, these are really tight. Oh! As he goes on his ass. I'm glad we do tighten bolts though. Just having everything loose here before I pick it up it just makes it a little bit easier. Just a little bit. Oh, that quartier feels good on a day like today. Okay, so we have the front, front end completely off the ground, stabilized by the back wheel. And up with our uh, $75 electric come along from Harbor Freight. Next thing is get the caliper bolts completely backed out and tie the calipers up out of the way so that we can pull the front wheel. Now I usually just zip tie them up to anything that's convenient that I can tie a zip tie around. And I have heard, I have heard that there are people that can put the front wheel on with the calipers still in place, only I'm not one of them. Now it's funny, even with two layers of rug on this concrete, it's ice cold. Man. Now, I, a little trick before I pull this caliper off, because it's a really tight fit up into the wheel, is to, is to just rock it from side to side a little bit, and that'll separate it just a little bit. Just a tiny amount. I just want to do it just a little bit. And what happens if you don't rock it, it gets too close to the wheel and you can scratch it. Come on, baby, come on, come on. Wow. Almost like I know what I'm doing. Now we're going to clean in here and I just do a little inspection. Plenty of material on the, uh, on the, bla on the brake pads. That's in good shape. So all I need to do now is taking some zip ties here and tie this up out of the way. This is kind of a cut and dry thing. And once I'm done with this, I'm going to pull the axle and pull the wheel off. Now with the caliper tied up, but I wrapped a rag around it just to avoid, there's, there's no chance I want to scratch either the paint on the bodywork or mostly I don't want to scratch those rims. Those rims are my pride and joy. Hand buffed. Now, it's a little trickier than that getting this back in. Just like Chris's R6 wheel. But anyway, we did get it out. We take the two bushings out. We're going to re-grease these, clean them up. Clean up all the hardware. They're symmetrical. Don't have to worry which one goes on which side. But we do have the wheel off. And there it is. Now, because I just worked on Chris's R6, I remembered a little modification I made to this axle. And it's a, it's a thing you could do on a grindstone. Normally, when this is stock, it has a lip here. And a lip here. 
that makes it difficult unless you have a helper. If you have a helper, of course, it's easy. Everything I do is based on I don't have a helper. So when I clean this up, I'm just going to make sure I get this axle, a little, a little coating of grease on it again. And I do remember that little modification, just radius that off. And what when it goes to go into the other side of the, the fork, it clicks right in. The other way, you're banging it and beating it all to death. I think Yamaha should have done this right at the factory. They should have hired me. So with the wheel off, let me just say before we pull that tire off, there's a lot of good ways to change tires. There's a lot of good ways to, uh, to do everything, to be honest, painting even. But I, everything I do is predicated on, I, pr I pretty much work alone. And I have a lot of friends with tire machines. And yeah, I could go up there and... and but you know what? I like to be able to do things in-house. I like to be an independent where I can control everything. I can pick the time. I can pick, well, how many scratches I'm going to put on a wheel. And the only way I can ever show on my videos is the way I do things. So maybe you don't, you have a similar thing. Well, and I know people have always said, oh, I do it a different way. Oh, I do it, uh, I turn the screws with a bigger wrench or something. Well, but the bottom line is, there's always a bottom line in everything. You know, you can, you can come up with all the football plays you want, but if you're not in the playoffs, well, <laughs> it doesn't matter. So I always like to think we use simple tools simple equipment, we share the information, and what we're proudest of is the final result. The final result is we have a bunch of motorcycles that are in pretty decent shape, and they're all riders, and we ride the hell out of them, and we enjoy what we do. It's a pretty good formula for success. So that's what I'm going to show my way of changing that tire. So the first thing I like to do before I work on anything is just at least wipe it off, and actually things are pretty clean considering the last couple of times we rode this bike, the roads were kind of dirty. And usually I like to work on stuff that's clean, or as clean as possible, and get some of the road grime off of this while we have it. It's just easier to do it when it's up on a bench like this than you can imagine. And these, these wheels are hand buffed. Boy, I think of how many hours I have into them, I'd hate to scratch them now. And of course the whole idea of doing this the way we do it is to avoid scratches. So the first thing is, I've got to let the air out of the tire. Take the Schrader valve out. See how this is going to play out. You know what, I just heard, I just heard, I know what time it is. I, I forgot what time it is. I looked up at, it's coffee break time. How could, how could I be so dumb? Even the birds agree it's time for a coffee break. <laughs> oh. I'm ready. I'm ready. There's just nothing better than a nice hot cup of coffee when you come in out of that garage at 40 degrees. So what do we have today to entertain us? Sugar cookies? Yeah, those are uncooked. Sugar cookies. Oh, doesn't matter. I'll eat them raw. They're ready to eat. Do I get a sample of these? Oh, free sample. Oh, there's more underneath. <laughs> Now one of the things I find handy is having all my tire changing tool equipment in one area and works to my advantage. A couple things that I always remember. These, these valves that you take the, sh the, the Schrader valve apart with, what'll, what can happen if you're not careful is this can scratch. If you, if you push this in here and you're not careful, you can scratch the rim. So what I try to do, of course, be very careful. Make sure that that's not a problem. Now, a couple little things that helped me over the years from destroying rims and scratching them. I have the Harbor Freight $25 to tool, and the, all of the parts that are going to touch, I cover with Gorilla Tape. Then when I'm all done, 
to even to make it even safer, I guess is the right word, that I don't scratch anything, I try to get some kind of a towel or a cloth or something soft in between. And when I set the rim in here, I don't want the rim touching anything, even though it shouldn't. In theory, it shouldn't, but sometime it does. And by the way, another thing, another little handy thing to know, this is an old fork leg that Chuck gave me, and it really gives you a lot of, a lot of extra leverage if you're an old bastard like me. So the first step is we have our trusty cutoff wheel, but if we didn't have one of these, a hacksaw is certainly an alternative way to do it. So the little door actually actually worked pretty good, but now I want to be real careful. I got to go in here because right in here there's going to be a steel bead. You'll see sparks flying. Sometimes if it's your lucky day, or if it's very, if it's warm out, you can now, you don't have to cut the other side, you can get this to sit down in the groove, and I, you know what, it's not going to be our lucky day, it's too cold out. <clears throat> and not only that, I'm not that strong. Okay, so we got to basically repeat the thing on the other side, and, but that, that cutoff wheel goes straight through it. A little tool if you work alone, I just put the rag on to. It's called a dog bone. What it does, it holds the tire from coming up when you're working on it. Well, we can just get rid of that now. Get downstairs and let the, let the new tire warm up. That's the main thing now. Now, as you probably have realized by now, I really treasure my wheels and I'm willing to take care of them. I had flitzed them up last year, a year ago. So what I'm going to do right now is, is before I put the tire on, give them a coat of flitz. I look carefully to see if I did any damage and... It used to break my heart. I'd take the wheel and I'd look at it and see a little chip or a little something. These wheels have held up just great. And believe me, the amount of time, if you look back at the video of doing these when we did the R1 wheels, holy mackerel, this was a labor of love. But And I want to protect it. And this will protect it actually probably through the whole summer. So I'll take five minutes here, clean these up, and then we'll be ready to try to get that tire on. But the problem is now, I've had good luck with Michelin 2s, Michelin 3s. And there was only one problem that I wanted to just try. Vlad had some really good luck on all of his collector bikes using these Pirellis. And so the last time he got me stuff, he got me a set of them, the same ones that are on his bike. So if these things don't work out, and he's, he's told me they use them on a the track and stuff too, so... I don't know how long they're going to last. That's the thing. I don't want to have track bike tires. I don't want slicks or anything like that. I want, I want to get at least some, some reasonable mileage out of them. Now this is the biggest thing you can ever learn about changing tires. They got to be warm. So I've been rotating this for the last... Oh, one side really is a lot warmer than the other. If a tire is cold and it's definitely, this shop is not warm, it's about 65 degrees. So having this extra heat in my favor, I could always use a heat gun. And in the worst of all worlds, I can use that quartz heater. So if I can't warm this up a little bit more, I'm, I, 
I do not like putting cold tires on. I like them to be nice and warm. And if you live in the warm, sunny weather place, put it out on a black driveway, wait 10 minutes, flip it over. I've had, when I had a digital thermometer, I had them up to 125 degrees. You could put them on without the tape. But we're gonna, put, we're gonna use Gorilla Tape to do this. Just looking at this, wow. There's a lot of heat comes in. No wonder the heating bill's so expensive for this house, wow. Now, this is the first time I've had one of these. These are Pirelli, I'll show the label. Pirelli Angel GT, I got them from Vlad. He's a dealer for these, of course. He's a dealer for everything. But anyway, get rid of that. I really wish I could get this tire warmer. I just have a feeling. It feels like, my gut impression, this tire is a lot stiffer, the carcass is stiffer, than a, a Michelin. A Michelin is usually, hmm, well, we don't know. One thing nice about these tires, as opposed to Michelins, they have a balancing, a little thing, way to balance them. That's handy. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna hope, you know what, I'm not gonna fool around. I'm gonna go get the quartz heater and warm this up. I don't feel like this is even close to being, th this is really a stiff tire. Oh, it, it, the heat can never hurt. And my saying is always, it's got to be warm to the touch. It can't be uh, just lukewarm. This will do it, but you don't want to leave it there. I want to just rotate it about every uh, 30 seconds. Just warm it up a little bit better. It's probably 65 degrees now, and that's going to be a real bear to get on. Now, usually, the wider rim tires, like the rear, go on easier. Narrow tires are more difficult. So while I'm waiting, I get all prepped up. I put, I put five strips of duct tape about 18 inches long. Now, they're not duct tape. This is Gorilla Tape. There is not Your duct tape doesn't work as well. And Gorilla Tape seems to be the best way. Now, I find it impossible. I have to do this barehanded because getting that tape on can be, when you have gloves, it just turns into a mess. Now, why do I have five? Because almost always one gets knurled up and I don't want to have to once I take, see what's going to happen, I'm going to take this tire off the heat and I want to get the tape on and get it down on the rim all in one cycle as quick as possible. Time is of the essence when, when we don't have the, the tire at a warm enough that I'd be real happy if it was, if it was 100 degrees would even be fine. All right, so now we're going to see if it's our lucky day. So I'll start with one piece of tape. I have the red dot. I have the rotation correct. I want the tape to go, but not down into the bead. I don't want it to be in the bead when I do this. I want to wrap it around as much as I can, bring it through here, then using my substantial body weight, that's what you want to do. Now go 90 degrees away. Boy, when you warm up the tire, the carcass gets a, definitely softer. Okay, same thing here. We got to do it four times. I've tried doing it more than four. It doesn't get any better. Four is a good number to do. And if you're strong, it works to your advantage. If you're weak, I don't know what to say. Being old doesn't help either, trust me. So we'll get four of these on. The main thing is don't get the tape, let me see that one wanted to stick. Don't get the tape down into the the black hole in space there where it's going to be hard to get it out once we pop the tire once we get it on okay so i'm i'm on the clock now if if this really mattered okay now the side that's going to go on which is going to be this side i have used other stuff i have that other tire lube guberga this seems to work just as good of course, I'll do that side of the rim, too. And I don't want to get it all inside the tire, either. But get a little bit on here. And this is when I try to go as quick as I can. Now, you really only have to do this to about half of the tire, because the other half slips right on. But, okay. That takes care of that. We'll get a dry rag. Okay, we've got to see if this is our lucky, lucky, lucky day. Let me know when it's your lucky day. <clears throat> this does not look like our lucky day. Ah! 
what it is is the tire is too cold. We're gonna have to really heat this tire up. Boy, boy this thing is unbelievable. This is possibly the hardest tire I've ever had to put on. Unbelievable. But we showed it in real time, just so you'd be impressed. What, what a bitch that tire is, holy mackerel. The Michelins go, but I think, see what I'm, I'm thinking, this is a, a, a stiffer carcass, and it was colder today. It's, even though I warmed this up, it's not warm like if we put it out in the sun. So, the answer is warm up the tire. Make it easy on yourself. But you got to see that in real, life, in real time. No camera cuts. So this is the point, as I get ready to do this, make sure I have the valve, the line up, the red dot where I want it. Make sure the tire rotation is okay. See, I, I've got to get this. That's why you don't make these too long. I've got to get this off. That's why I can't use gloves. Once that's up, peel up the other part. And make sure you get the whole thing off on all four of them, or you're in big trouble. Girl's loudest compressor, building up some pressure. Let's see if we can seat this bead real quick. Time to put the Schrader valve in. And, oh, that compressor, you get a headache. It's a wonderful compressor. Oh boy, they should, they should give you a free uh, hearing aid with every compressor. I don't want to over tighten this. Okay, that's good. Come on, baby. Hey, there we go. Now, what I always do is I put 50 pounds in, and tomorrow morning I'll check this, and if it's still 50 pounds, there's 50 right there, I'll be very, very happy. Now, the next thing is, while we're, I already put a little Windex on so that the bead would seat nice, and I can go back, check that we don't have any air bubbles, any air leaks around the Schrader valve. Everything looks good so far. And for anybody new to the channel, those are Curvy Girl, um, the valves, the 90 degree offset valves. Do the same thing on this side. Now usually the Michelin tires, I guess, <laughs> I've done a lot of Michelin. I put seven sets of Michelin tires on this bike. Well, I, I think this, this would have been the seventh. It's six plus this one. So once we get this set, and I'm happy with it. Now, I know tires change the handling of the bike. When I put the, the Suzuki front tire, I put the Michelin, the real expensive one, the one that's $10 more than the other one, on a, on the Suzuki, it's a stiffer carcass tire. Wow, did that change the handling of the bike. That was a, that was a giant upgrade. I don't know that this is going to do anything handling-wise, but, and I'm willing to take Vlad's opinion that these are great street bike tires, Gran Turismo Angels. So, but again, I like to do all the testing myself, and this summer, we'll find out. Since I don't do any more track days, I don't need soft track tires anymore. I need, I need tires that are just going to be reliable, good tires, and we'll see how these work out. And of course, I'll report either way. So now it's time to see if this is going to be a close balance or not that good. Well, it's pretty close. Wow. In fact, it's really close. <laughs> I'm not used to having things this work this good. Uh, it, I'm, I'm not even going to put a weight on this. This is so close. Look at that. That's unbelievable. So, a, a lot of the Michelins balance right off the bat, too. And when they didn't balance, it was very, it was very easy to just 10 grams or so, and that was it. Oh, that's amazing. That's, that's a good balance. I'm happy with that. That's for sure. I don't know if you can beat that. Oh, I really do love my hand buffed rims. They are, that is one of my pride and joys. Well, that's pretty, that's pretty much ready to put back on a motorcycle. Wow. That was, that was, that, that tire was difficult to mount. I'm glad I got to show it in real time, but boy, you know, if you're, uh, 
it, I know it would have made it a lot easier if it was a hot summer day. I could have put it out in the sun. But I, as I look back at it, I don't think that could have gone any better. But now here's the thing, though. Both Karen and I have been recovering from illness, and little by little we've been trying to get back out walking every day. Right now, it's cleared up just enough that we're going to take a little walk through Rutherford. Look at the flowering trees, and then when I get back, we'll put this back together. Not, not an appropriate day for a test ride, because I still am not 100%, and I don't want to ride a motorcycle feeling the way I do. But I did get that tire mounted. So as we're walking around Rutherford, it, this just turned out to be an absolutely <laughs> unpredictable day. But the flowers, this is the sign of spring. And all the trees are starting to bloom now this time of year. Wow. It's beautiful walking around here. What do you think, Karen? Gorgeous. Gorgeous. So Karen just told me this is a magnolia. Oh, there's some birds. A magnolia. We, ha we actually had one in the front of our house, but it grew too close to the house and we had to take it down. Beautiful. So we're back from our walk and it, we didn't even notice. We have our ne next door neighbor has a nice white tree and we're going to have our, our weeping cherry is coming into bloom very soon. But for us, it's time to get back, putting that wheel back on the R1 to break time over. Right, so we're back from our little walk trying to get better here. It's a long process. Yeah, and I'm surprised. I thought somebody would come over to the house while I was out walking with Karen and put the wheel on for me, but you know what? That, that never happens. So what I have to do, I'm going to take the, the hardware downstairs to the buffing wheel, clean all the hardware up, clean the axle end up, but this is such a good trick. I remember doing this and putting it back, and I did it to Chris's bike too. So it just makes putting it together just a lot easier when you have to work alone. Now, you may remember yesterday, well, the day before, I don't remember. I'm lost in a time window here. The, we tested these little Dremel bits, and here's an area with a big buffing wheel. You can't get in there. With this little buffing wheel, piece of cake. So even more, one thing is, from one day, look at the difference. From one day, you work on something, and the next day, you're using a tool as part of your regular arsenal of stuff. I'm telling you, this is, this is a good little, that little bag of stuff. It's on yesterday's video, if you haven't seen it. Uh, just let me show this real close, because we're going to do all the hardware here. I'm not fooling around. When I put the bike back together, that's the way I want it. A little before and after of one that's been cleaned up and one that isn't. I always ask, which part would you want on your motorcycle? And that all cleaned up and we're ready to put that wheel back on. Well, I love working with clean hardware. Now the trick here is to get both of the spacers I put a little wheel bearing grease on them, but to get them both lined up, get the axle in one side, get it to kind of self-center on the other side, and then if it's your lucky day, this is where if you have a second person, you can guide this in. It's a lot easier. And there it is. Whee! Maybe it is my lucky day. You never can tell. Every day is my lucky day. Wow. Okay, we got to button it up, tighten up all the bolts. The brakes back on. I'm trying to picture this up. I wish it was earlier. I'd even go for a test ride, but it's. I just don't feel up to it right now. I always like, when I work on a bike, I always like to test it because every once in a while, I say, Gee, you know, I should have checked that at home. Yeah, that went together well. Luciano would be impressed. Valentino Rossi, maybe not so much. The way this works, I have the pinch bolts on the other side. The axle bottoms out, the pinch bolts go in. And now, 
And as I sock these down the pinch bolts, I, I want to make sure they're tight before I actually put the torque on. And I'll do this with the torque wrench once I have this just tightened up with this wrench. And then this one get torqued down. Now this is the part of the job I have to really be careful with. Cut the zip ties and get rid of this. Oh, get rid of this all together. Don't need this anymore. Don't need this. Now, because these are spread open and I've cleaned them out and we got plenty of material, I'm hoping it's the hope of hopes that this will drop in there without a lot of drama. Now, if it there, it did. It, wow, you have no idea how lucky that is. Okay, the two little tangs snap in. They're good to go, and now we have our refurbished hardware. Now, the other side, what's going to happen? Because I've I've opened this, it shut the other side. I'm going to have to take a screwdriver and open that up. But the more you open it up, the less chance there is that you're going to scratch that wheel. And boy, do I hate scratched wheels. If you only knew. Now, of course, these bolts are all Loctited in. It goes without saying. And when we're all done, we'll put a final torque on everything with the real, the real Maguna torque wrench. And this is the side that will always be just a little more challenging because I have pinched the other side, which in turn has squeezed these together just a little bit. And I want the, I want this, the pads as far apart as possible. That gives me the most flexibility to get this in place without making a problem. And with a six piston caliper, they gotta all be apart. By the way, for anybody that would be interested in such information, the brakes on this bike are really, really exceptional. I don't know how good some of the bikes, I've ridden an awful lot of sport bikes, including some of the, the really expensive ones, and I haven't really never found any that are better than this. But as I've said, my track days are over, and to be honest, I'm looking forward to many more years of riding, but realistically, I don't think I have any track days left in me. I'm long in the tooth. So there you have it, and I hope it's been an enjoyable, uh, however long this video is. But this is my way of doing it. I know it takes a little longer than if you have a friend with a tire machine. Maybe even a little more effort, but the result, I always think what's important to me, at the end of the day, I don't have any scratches on those rims. And that is super important to me. And I've had so many good adventures with this motorcycle, and so many great times and great rides with people in the A-Team. I don't want to scratch anything. I guess I'm just a belligerent old man. <laughs> I can hear you going, yeah, he is. Anyway, that's it, but too late in the day to go for a ride, but I hope the weather's better tomorrow.